Hello and welcome to today's teaching. I am Brother Hosanna David. Today we want to talk about a very important topic and that is end time events and God's sovereign will. God has a sovereign will and his, his will for this world is eternal. It's not that he just woke up one day while men have started existing in the world and he chose to do what he wants to do. We can see after the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, God actually changed his mind on some things. But I want to tell you that God has a sovereign will, and that will is above any kind of earthly or demonic influence. It cannot change until we begin to see God as a supernatural God that rules above every creature of his we will not be able to know God the way we're supposed to know him God is eternal God is sovereign and God has eternal will his will cannot be bent nobody can bend his will nobody can influence his will as far as the end time events are concerned why am I talking about this today it is because the hearts of men are beginning to fail them, including me, myself. There was a time recently I felt so disappointed, I felt so almost hopeless because of the happenings in the world. But, you know, as Christians, we have to take solace, comfort in the Word of God. And that's exactly what I did. And I know at the back of my mind that God is still very much in control of everything that is happening in the world today. I know that there is the express will of God and there is the permissible will of God. Express will of God is what God has purposed in his mind originally to do. Permissible will of God is what God allows. It is not actually his original will, but he allows it for some reasons and whatsoever thing that God allows doesn't actually goes against God's eternal will that's the truth it cannot override God's eternal will that is what I mean by goes in case so um, I want us to read Psalms 115 verse 3 it says but our God is in heaven, he had done whatsoever he had pleased. God has no counselor. Nobody can counsel God. Nobody can tell him what to do. God has no advisor. He does whatsoever thing he wills. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all that were therein. Yes, that is the truth. In fact, the throne of God, the throne of God is in heaven, and the whole of the earth, including the kings, their thrones, and all the kingdoms of this world, and the kingdoms under the earth, everything they are the footstool of God. That is the ultimate truth. So God is in heaven and he does whatsoever thing he wills. Nobody can tell him. Oh, you would have done it this way, but you failed. No, nobody can tell him that. So we have to understand that God has a right to permit anything he wants to happen in his world, and nobody can question him. We know that Satan lives in this world, and that Satan is against the prosperity of men, especially the prosperity of the soul of men. That is the salvation of humans. He doesn't want it. The devil can allow you to have cars, to have children, to have a good life. He may not be threatened, but the moment you make up your mind to serve God and make heaven, he will be threatened. That is the truth. He doesn't want anybody to enter heaven. Even if he wants somebody dead, he wants the person to die and to go to hell. That is how desperate the devil is. But God's will for us is that we should be saved. There are opposing powers in this world. No matter how many and how powerful they are, 
God has a plan. If you read the book of Revelation, you see different events in the Bible. Now the question is, are these events mere prophecies or God himself has his own will and because God's will is sovereign, they will lead to the perfection of God's own plans and will for the world. Yes, all things work together for the good of those who love God. That is how even the plans and the schemings of the devil, everything, including everything people are doing today, they are going to work out the plan of God for this world. That is the truth. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 22. And as I go through this teaching, I want you to look inwardly and listen to the voice of the Lord. Let Him minister to you the way it concerns you. The way He speaks to me through this message may not be the way He's going to talk to you. But I want you to internalize this message and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your spirit. To minister to your soul so that you can find peace let the peace of God that passes all understanding find a place in your heart to reign because I know there's a lot of confusion in the world right now because of what is happening now I know people are beginning to question if God is still in charge but I want to tell you that God chooses to allow whatsoever thing he wants in his world and he decides to stop whatsoever thing he does not want no matter how wicked the plan is, no matter how disastrous, it will all work together to materialize into God's own will. God allows what He wants to allow. It could be bad, it could be good. That is the truth. The earth is a lot and the fullness thereof. Jeremiah 5.22 Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will you not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree? Let me say this. When God created the sea, he placed boundaries with sand be beside the river banks. When he created the oceans, the creeks, the seas, the rivers, God gave them their own boundaries so that when the waves, when the turbulence, when they come, they could be as high as this building, but they have their own boundary and they can never in any way exceed their boundaries. Why? Because God made a perpetual decree. He says, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree. There is a decree that God has released. And no power can override that decree. That decree. Let me read a simpler, a simpler verse. Should you not tremble in my presence, I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. That is the truth. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. God has released a perpetual decree. And it stands forever. It is an everlasting decree. So look at the time of Dani. Look at the prophecies. And they are coming to pass before our very eyes. Look at Revelation. Revelation. About 2,000 years ago. They are unfolding before our very eyes. And you know what? When things happen and they fulfill the scripture, you know the feeling of God, I told you, yeah, I told you. 
I've already told you. But when Satan runs up and down and thinks he's smart, he doesn't know that everything he's doing is actually just to give birth to the will of God. They think they are smart, but they don't know that God catches the wise in their own schemes, in their own schemes, in their own craftiness. That is the truth. Don't let your heart be troubled. God is very much in charge. If this disease that is ravaging the world now, if God hadn't allowed it, it wouldn't have come. I am one of those who believe that everything was engineered in a laboratory. I believe that there are evidences everywhere even from the way the censorship is taking place, we know, including censorship of medications, we know. How many of them have ever come online or on CNN to begin to tell you that you need to take vitamin D, that you need to take this, take that, take this vitamin, take this, so that you will not get it. It's none of your business. Even treatments that have been proven to work they banned it. And if you want to save life, you should be ready to risk your life. I am one of those who believe that everything was man-made. But I am still telling you that if God hasn't allowed it, it wouldn't have happened. God has eternal will. So when the end time events are unfolding, we don't need to be troubled. We don't need to allow our hearts to be troubled. Because God is very much in charge. I remember a few years ago, like up to like, should be about five, six years ago. I did so many research and I used to be afraid. I could just be sitting and my heart would be failing me. Why? Because I, I did research. I learned so much about the Illuminati, the, uh, one of the biggest secret society, the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, under the Roman Catholic Church. And I saw that Satan is actually in charge of this world. I used to be afraid. God knew my heart. And one day, the Holy Spirit visited me. And he told me that apart from the police, the soldiers that are taking care of this world, the hand of God is still very much holding this world. That God is still very much interested in the affairs of this world. And that he is in charge that I shouldn't be afraid. I know there are people whose hearts have started feeling them. But I want to tell you, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God and fight. Don't give up, for God is on the throne. He chooses to allow what He wants to allow, and He chooses to block whatsoever thing He disallows. Let's move on. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 16. Now listen to this. I know there are some of you who may question something here. But I tell you, God is beyond any form of question. We have no right to question Him. Because we are like gems in a pot of soup. That's exactly what we are. Each one of us is like a tiny microscopic gem, microorganism. That is what we are in the sight of God. Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Now listen to this. And I have created the waster to destroy. I have created the waster to destroy yes 
God created the destroyer to destroy. That is the truth. This verse says, and I have, and it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. And it goes on to say, no weapon forged against you will prevail. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Even though I created them, I am giving you the assurance that even though they, they will destroy, which is what they have been created for, they will not harm you. And that is the truth. Amen. So don't let your heart be troubled. Don't allow anything shake your mind. Be strong in the Lord. God is on the throne. I don't know where you are feeling pain right now. Are you feeling that everything is hopeless? Are you feeling that God is asleep? Are you feeling that God is dead? Are you feeling that God has turned away his face? If you read the book of Revelation, you will know that there are no many sweet things about this word. There are words, bitter things written about this word. I remember a message the Lord gave me um, a few years ago, I think 2017, it was about end time wars. I will try to put the link in the description box. You can go to Eagle Eye Opener to read it. Not many sweet things about this world. But let's, let's focus on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Stay away from sin. Prepare for the rapture. If it happens today, I'll be very glad. And that is what we should look up to. But whether it comes now or later, let's get ourselves ready. It is only sin and unbelief that can stop us. So believe to the end. Don't give up on your faith on God. And don't also wallow in sin. If you fall into sin, rise up immediately. Dust yourself. Put on your garment of righteousness and keep moving. It is not those who used to be saints that the Lord is going to rapture. It is those who are saints and are watching that the Lord, those who are watching that the Lord is going to rapture. Thank you for listening to this message. Please share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless you. Bye bye.